What's up guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you're doing good. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a special spoiler-free review of the new Ashlands Valheim update. I've had a lot more time to spend with the game since my last video about this. And I was just trying to think of the best way I can really cover this update in more of a review style that best serves the community. Because I know lots of people are interested in hearing what I think about this update as a Valheim creator. And I just realized that it's actually possible to do this without spoiling anything. For anyone out there that is avoiding spoilers, which I know is quite a lot of people in the community. So in the video, I've basically broken all of the parts of the update down into a vague list where we don't really get into anything specific. We just talk about the content in general, the boss in general, and basically just everything in the update without giving away any details. So hopefully that sounds useful to you. Let's jump into it. So as we get started, I just want to say that everything in this video is just my opinion. I don't view any of this as objective fact. So if you disagree with any of it, that is absolutely fine. And also I want to clarify that I don't really believe in doing really objective numerical breakdowns of video games when it comes to reviews or any kind of like artistic products. I think they're a lot more complicated than just buying a hand drill or something. So I'm really just going to be summarizing the quality of all of the aspects of the update and whether or not I think it's good. So the first thing I want to talk about is the new content. How much content is there? How good is it? How fun is it? And all of the above. So I think the content in this update is done to a really high level. There's actually a deceptive amount of stuff in this update when it comes to progression, the biome itself, the design of the Ashlands, all of the new items, all of the new enemies, the new boss, the new mini boss. When you break all of it down, there is actually a ton. It's very comparable to how much was in the Mistlands update, but somehow everything in this update feels a lot more exciting to me personally. I think it's down to the Ashlands just feeling more fun and being more visually impressive. But yeah, in terms of quantity and quality, it is all definitely there. There's lots of new enemies. There's several new activities to partake in. And how you progress, how you obtain ore is very unique in this biome in a way that it feels like it does add to the experience in a substantial way. The next thing I want to talk about is the difficulty. Now, I will say that my previous video was more of a first impressions video. And I saw lots of people saying that they'd heard the update was very difficult. And I will say that after spending more time with the update since the last video, that I have noticed some notable differences in difficulty. So the first thing I will say is that how hard you're going to find this biome at first is greatly going to depend on your experience, number one, getting there, and number two, when you get to shore. There is a chance when you get to shore that you're instantly overrun by mobs. And so if you're not prepared for that, you are going to immediately just get overrun and it's going to make the whole biome feel really difficult and really overwhelming. Now, you might get lucky and be able to come ashore somewhere a little quieter. But if you are extremely prepared for this happening, there are some relatively easy ways of overcoming it. It's just you got to rethink your approach and not treat it like every other biome. This is more guide territory, so I won't elaborate on this. I'll make some future videos where I'll do guides and stuff and explain how to handle the Ashlands. But it's definitely very clear that Ashlands is a difficult biome both to get to and to traverse and the mobs there are no joke. But what I will say is once you sort of adjust your way of thinking, your playstyle, maybe even your character build, for example, to let's say go for more magic, you might start to have less of a hard time. And once you sort of adjust to these new things, it's not actually that difficult in terms of mechanical skill and reaction time and stuff like that. It's not like that. In true Valheim fashion, if you are extremely prepared and you've thought it out, you're going to be fine. But it may stop some people in their tracks if they're not willing to be more flexible. The new mobs in general are great. Once you get over this initial hurdle of when you land in the Ashlands, dealing with mobs in general is really not that difficult. Once you know their strengths and weaknesses and once you've figured out your new character build and perhaps changed up your playstyle, 
The way they move feels far more polished, far more interesting. The AI in this biome feels much better than other biomes. And there is a ton more variety in enemies in this biome than in almost anywhere else in the game. And in general, just the detail in the Ashlands feels huge compared to the other parts of the game. So the next thing I want to talk about I'm trying not to say this word out loud, just in case anyone isn't aware of what Iron Gate has said about this. But obviously, in every biome in the game, there is some sort of dungeon content that acts as the place to go where you got to gather the items that you need to summon the boss or the fragments of the items you need to summon the boss. And the Ashlands is no different in that regard. However, it does work completely differently in the Ashlands. It is much more similar to how it works in the Mistlands. I don't want to give away too much there. But what I will say about these areas, if you haven't already guessed what I'm talking about, is that these key areas are some of the biggest difficulty hurdles, especially at first. They contain an extremely high concentration of enemies and perhaps a high concentration of some more difficult enemies, sort of in a similar way to the fueling camps in the plains, but it's a lot more drastic than that. So expect to be uh, a little bit more surprised than that. But once you utilize some of the new mechanics in the game, it does make things a little simpler. And once again, you may have to rethink your approach and just figure out like what has been added in the last few updates that's actually useful for this. Because you got to remember like magic was just added. I think the player base hasn't adjusted to thinking about magic as a solution to things. So thinking about stuff like that will be greatly beneficial here. But anyway, these areas themselves where you get the items needed to summon the boss are very interesting, very unique. Overall, they provide an interesting challenge and a new awesome potential place to build a base, which is probably one of the most exciting things about these parts of the map. But they do cover quite a small area and don't feel like quite as much content as a traditional dungeon system like with crypts or the other dungeons in the game. But I think it makes up for this in the uniqueness and also the difficulty they pose makes them more interesting. And yeah, all the new mechanics here are great. New weapons in general are awesome. There is a ton of variety, a ton of new melee weapons, a ton of new ranged weapons, some awesome new magic additions. Basically, the entire sort of roster, all of the genres of Valheim weaponry have tons of new additions. There is some specific mechanics and some specific new options with crafting that make the weapons in this update particularly interesting that I absolutely love and I can't wait for everyone to experience. I think it's not too much to say that there's several unique effects applied by some of these weapons. That is awesome. And there's no doubt that in this update, a large variety of playstyles have been thought about here. So if you like high DPS, high movement speed, the stuff for you. If you like more tanky gameplay, the stuff for you. If you like range gameplay, the stuff for you. If you like magic, etc. Love this variety. Same goes with the armor. There's obviously fewer armor sets been added, but all of the major things I just described, all the major playstyles are also catered to. And it's also worth saying that all of the new armors and weapons look so cool. Visually, I think the assets in this update are the most stunning we've had in any Valheim update previously. There are some new capes that do some interesting things as well that are massive, massive welcome additions to this update. And I also want everyone to know, without spoiling anything, that I'm happy to say that it's going to be worth beating the Ashlands just to gain some of the utility you get from some of the gear in this update. The next thing I've got on my list to talk about is the grindiness. The grindiness of Valheim is something that comes up a lot, I think, particularly for people that sort of bounce off the game sometimes due to the grindiness of certain areas. And I do think that Ashlands is less grindy in some ways and more so in others. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But the grindiness of obtaining the ores and the key materials to unlock new recipes and stuff, I would say is actually very low. The new ore is obtained in a very unique and fun way. And what is actually usually one of the biggest things that makes this process grindy in Valheim of obtaining all the materials and upgrading and stuff, one of the things that makes it the most grindy has been alleviated by an awesome new mechanic that will become apparent once you start unlocking recipes. So I'm happy to say there is a big quality of life improvement when it comes to the grindiness of progression of unlocking new recipes and building all of the new things in this update. Where this update is a bit more grindy than others though, is the difficulty level in general. It might start to feel like more of a grind 
to fight enemies and obtain those key items to summon the boss. It's a different type of grind. And I think it is a sort of grind that lots of players that are looking for more of a challenge are going to welcome. But it might be something that puts off some players, at least for a while, until they figure out and prepare and decide their approach and their strategy to the Ashlands. I don't want to overstate the difficulty though. I don't think at any point anything in Valheim still comes close to like beating any Dark Souls game, for example. And all of the combat in this entire update can be made very easy just by learning a few tips and setting up a specific type of character. Just like everything in Valheim, you can overcome it. The boss progression. So I mentioned those key areas where we used to sort of collecting the items we need to summon the boss in the Ashlands. The experience of doing that is very cool, but this is also where some of the grindiness of this update comes in because those key areas that are said that provide some of the most difficult gameplay are where you're going to have to go back to time and time again in order to do what you need to do to summon the boss. So you have to be prepared for mastering the combat and probably redesigning your character around handling the Ashlands in order for it to be pleasurable at least because I do think it might just get frustrating if you just insist on using a certain type of character that just isn't going to work in this biome. However, once you figure all of this out, I think the boss progression is very satisfying. And one of the interesting things about finding all of these locations to acquire everything you need to summon the boss is that in the Mistlands, for example, you may end up exploring quite a lot of the map in order to find everything that you want. But there is an advantage to the Ashlands just being a small chain of islands to the south in that at least you're never really going to have to travel super far. It's not going to send you to the opposite side of the world to find what you want. And so I do think this improves the progression and alleviates some of the grindiness of the combat with some more convenience in chip graphical area. My last thing I want to say about this progression, how you summon the boss, is just I think it is extremely cool. It feels like an epic Zelda quest and I do absolutely love this part of the game in general. It's awesome. The boss itself, I obviously won't spoil, but it's very cool that lore-wise it's sort of related let's say to one of the other bosses that'll become very apparent when it happens to you it has one of the coolest animations and boss summoning moments in the entire game if not the coolest the boss fight itself is a little less intense than the queen because the queen obviously does spam summoning seekers which can be very frustrating but it's still a good challenge and i think the animation the visuals the character model for this boss all of the moves and the move sets of this boss just feel really refined compared to other bosses in the game actually and honestly it feels like one of the most polished boss fights so far and genuinely really fun and interesting there's some difficulty there mostly just to the fact that it has a lot of health but it's not too crazy if you can handle the rest of the biome you'll be able to handle the boss eventually the new base building stuff is absolutely epic builders are going to be so happy with all of the stuff in this update so many awesome build pieces i absolutely love it it has sort of like a almost steampunky aesthetic that i absolutely love and you can do a lot more fancy stuff with architecture with some of the stuff in this update sailing to the ashlands is a pretty interesting and unique experience i'm not going to spoil exactly what happens but i will say prepare for some complications take lots of resources with you be ready for your boat to break um, but on the whole this part of the experience is very unique and very exciting it can be a little frustrating navigating through some of the rocks and the waters there but i think overall the uniqueness just trumps everything else and i think the experience of sailing to the ashlands is great it may seem a little intimidating at first like everything else about the ashlands but as long as you're prepared to be fixing a boat on the fly and getting them portals down in a safe spot it is absolutely epic and it feels this is a weird thing to say but it feels the most like you're sailing to a, a physical location where something epic is about to happen more so than anything else just because of the effects in the water and the weather and the sky it just feels like something epic is going down when you enter the ashlands and i absolutely love that i don't think it's a spoiler to say there is a new mini boss because almost every biome has a mini boss now don't worry i'm not going to give away any details but i will say that i think it's by far the coolest mini boss in the game it's perhaps more of a challenge than some of the other mini bosses but if you utilize some of the new gear from the ashlands especially some specific gear which i won't spoil but if you utilize a certain set of gear it's going to be a lot easier and the reward the payoff for beating this 
is so much greater and cooler than any other mini boss in the game. And if you're only going to do one mini boss, this should be the one you do. The whole experience of how you find it, what you get in return, is just awesome. I love it. The reward could still be better but we'll see in the long term how valuable the reward is i think it's its own reward it's super cool it's super good already but if we start thinking ahead against not spoiling anything what the next biome update will be with the deep north maybe this reward is very useful in which case when that update comes out all of a sudden this reward might seem way more valuable the new power that you get for doing the boss is really good super high utility most people that play this game either just run around with Ethereum on, they run around with Bone Master on when they're going to get into a fight and they use modded to sail. But other than that, they just stick with one or two powers compared to all of the other abilities that are available. The new power is definitely going to become one of those things regularly used because its utility is very, very good. And I think people are going to be happy to hear that. There is some new lore stuff that's very cool and some new NPC stuff that I won't spoil. But people that are fans or the experience of discovering the dwarves in the Mistlands and that type of environmental storytelling and how the dwarves are a real sense of place in the Mistlands, they'll be very happy with the Ashlands. That is very, very good. All of that stuff I would still like to see be more fleshed out in the future, but extremely good foundation. Love it. Very cool. All of the new music is excellent as it always is. I love the Valheim soundtrack. So cool. And yeah, the heavy metal for the boss fight. I absolutely love. We're getting closer and closer to it being something I would actually genuinely listen to, whether it is a good soundtrack or not. There is some new events. I feel like that's not a spoiler to say that. And they are very good. One of the events specifically is very unique. One's exactly what you would expect, and one of them isn't. And I think that is absolutely epic. So get ready for a twist there, <laughs> especially when uh, trying to defend your base because some more effort might be required in some scenarios there to clear up some of these events, let's say. And I think that is an absolutely epic, epic new twist. Something specific I am going to say in this video is to do with something that was added in this update that's not related to the Ashlands. So it's not an Ashland spoiler at all. And it's to do with a change that was made to the Feather Cape. And the reason I'm adding this in at the end is just because a ton of people will definitely miss this. But the Feather Cape actually now can increase your jump height, which is a lot of fun and is undoubtedly going to be useful in the Mistlands. And that is a really good addition. That is one step in the right direction to improve in the experience of traversing the terrain in that bio. All right, guys, that's just about going to do it for this video. I did wait around quite a bit, but it's kind of hard to avoid spoilers. But hopefully you guys got a general feel for what I was saying and you know whether the Ashlands update is for you and whether it's a good time to come back to the game. I think it is. I just want to finally say to all of the people at Iron Gate that might see this, I think you guys have done an absolutely incredible job. The Ashlands is absolutely amazing. It's totally worth the wait. I'm sure there's some balancing and stuff to figure out still, but I think it is one of the coolest updates to the game ever, if not the coolest and all of the new content is extremely good and overall every major content patch just feels more polished than the last and that is extremely impressive all right guys that's just about going to do it for this video i'm super excited to dive back into the ashlands and play more Valhags for this update and i hope you guys are as well if you like this video please don't forget to leave a like and a nice positive comment for the youtube algorithm and subscribe for future content i do stream live on this very youtube channel and also live on twitch at twitch.tv slash nick so i'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in that you can help support the content financially on patreon at patreon.com slash nick so i'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in that as well you can follow me on social media and join my discord at the links below and until next time have a good one.